Okay, hi, my name is Ralph Giles. Um, I was going to do a quick lightning talk about the IceCast streaming server, which is how you stream live AUG streams on the web. So uh, when we first started the AUG project, it was all about audio and internet radio, and you could do MP3 streams, which were painful because there was no way to send metadata or anything. And so we really focused at, initially with the AUG container format that we developed on making it streamable so that you could put stuff on and you could listen to it and people wouldn't have to wait to download things and so on. So one of the first things we wrote is a program called IceCast, which lets you stream a live AUG file. So AUG files will stream off uh, a normal web server. You can just put it in the directory and players can play it as they download it, um, unlike QuickTime and Real, which were couldn't do that at the time. You had to have special streaming software. But if you want to be up, having people downloading while you're uploading, you need uh, special support. And Apache will just look at how big the file is on the server, and it'll give people that. And so if you're at, even if you're writing to it on the other end, people will, will only get up to wherever they, the, whatever the length of the file was when they started. So uh, let's see. So if you go to icecast.org, you can see the website, and you can download it. It's free software under the GPL. So you can download the source tarball, or if you're using Linux, you can apt-get install icecast2, or you can um, uh, yum install it as well, I think. And so the only tricky thing about it is configuring it. So you get it installed, and you run it as a daemon, and then what happens is, let's see, there's a documentation link. There we go. It explains how to how to do it. This is a little bit. It's very open source, but you know, IceCast documentation is now available online. So if you click there, if you don't have too many fingers, and then the latest release. Ah, it's the side. Okay. Okay. So there's the main thing is the basic setup. So there's three directories. And you have to tell it what its host name is, what its source format, what a password is that controls connection, and and so on. So basically, there's an XML file that you have to um, that you have to edit. Oh, that doesn't work. Which looks like this. So if you're on Linux, this the package will install this in etsy icecast to icecast.xml. So you open this up and you edit it. And the important part is right here at the top, the limits, how many um, clients you want to have, how many sources you want to have. And it explains what they all do, and there's all sorts of extra options if you want to control it. And the other thing is the password. The default password is HackMe. If someone's installed it on their, in their system, you can, and they haven't changed the password, that's what you use. And so the other half of it, so once you have the server running, it looks like, let's see, repeater.zif.org is one I just started today. So generally, people run IceCast on a different port. And currently, all the streams are down. So we can try, oops, we can try this one. This still has been there already. So if you just go to the website on page 8, um, port 8000, or whatever you configured it to be, you get this sort of index listing of all the streams. And so what, what you have to do is this is a server. You're supposed to put this on a hand, high bandwidth something in Colo somewhere that everybody can connect to. And then wherever you are creating the stream inside your conference or inside your, your event, you have a machine that's encoding, and then it uploads uh, directly to the server. And this is where there's not a really one, there's not one good solution that's good for everyone. Um, Depending on what your input is and how you're capturing things, there's different software that's better than others. So a lot of people use FFmpeg to Theora, which you can, uh, so you can do like DV grab if you have a DV camera to, and pipe that to FFmpeg to Theora and then pipe that to a little thing called Aug Forward, which sends it to the IceCast server. And you can also write GStreamer pipelines to do this sort of thing. But once you've done that, you'll get a list here, and there'll be a playlist thing, and here's an embedded HTML5 uh, media element. And if we have enough bandwidth, you'll be able to watch people talking right there on the page. So the media element isn't in the most recent release, but you can hack this in. The, uh, this is generated through XML style sheets, so you can just stick in the thing. Pull myself up. Ah, I hate your track bad. Let's see, we're Civic 3. Yep, there we are. 
So one thing with IceCast is it's... Um, Look at me. <laughs> mirror in the mirror. So there is significant latency yeah, with IceCast, both with the odd format and when you're streaming over. I should probably turn off that because it's really distracting. Okay, listen, trying to talk over yourself. Um, so there's a lot of latency both with the encoder and with sending things there and with things coming back and with the HTT protocol and with the AUG encapsulation. So this is really for broadcasting events. It's not for conferencing because there'll be several seconds delay between what you record and what someone else can see. But that's fine for one-way sort of things. And IceCast is really designed for that. The other thing it does that normal web servers don't do is it shares a lot of resources on the assumption that everybody wants to watch the live stream that's happening now. So it can handle thousands of users on a very small box watching the same stream, whereas most web servers are designed for thousands or hundreds or thousands of users watching different things as fast as possible. So it scales much better for large audiences that are trying to follow something like this. And um, I guess that's it for now. Does anybody have any questions? Yes? What are you using to transcode the Right. <clears throat> so um, we were very disappointed after our FOMS workshop about open media formats that we got here to LCA, and we looked at the uh, streams. I don't know if the links are still here. They seem to have gone. They're on today's ones. They're on today's ones? Oh, yeah. So if you go to Civic Swing 3, live video, this is a Mac. So there's embedded, it tries to embed in player or something. Oh, this is the Octiora stream now. Excellent. Okay. But it's down. <laughs> right. OK. So, um, so yesterday when we got here, we looked here. And this is Microsoft Silverlight. No, so, right so I can right click in. Right click? Right click in the middle of it. That looks like Flash now. Right click in the middle of it. Yes, it's right click. Bottom right bar, a part of the trend. Control. What? It's got a right click here. Oh, OK. Silverlight. There you go. So you can see, this is Microsoft Silverlight. And on my machine, it said, please download and install Microsoft Silverlight to view the Linux ConfAU video, which I thought was kind of offensive. Um, I mean, it's great technology, but it's not what we're about here. This is, we're about you know, open formats and being able to do what we can. So uh, we kind of scrambled to put up an alternative, which is, is now up there. And so what we did is you can play uh, you can play Microsoft video streams with plugins for GStreamer from a company called Fluendo. They're proprietary software, but you can buy them. You get the complete plugin pack. It's only 28 euros, and that comes with the patent licenses that imp for the, that cover all of the Windows Media and MPEG4 codecs. And so what some people don't realize is that while there are open source, copyright open source implementations of most of these media codecs, and if you download mPlayer or whatever, it'll play this stuff, in most of the world, including Australia and New Zealand, you need a patent license to use that code. So unless you only care about, you don't, unless you don't care about copyright, in which case I'm not sure why you're in a free software conference, or you don't, you care about copyright and you don't care about patent, you you aren't really using free things when you use free formats, even if there's a GPL implementation of it, because the patent covers the use of any implementation of that idea, regardless of who did it and what copyright license it's under. So in much of the world, the only legal way to watch these streams, you can, you can get a copy of uh, Microsoft Windows, you can install Silverlight on your, your Mac, or you can download this, and then it'll play in, in any GStreamer-based player on, uh, on Linux. So we are frantically trying to get our servers somewhere that have bandwidth. We, I bought a copy of this and installed it. And so we are running a transcode pipeline just from the command line with GST launch. So we GST launch, URI decode bin, URI is whatever we pull out of their stream ASX file. And then we pipe that to the, uh, so that decodes it using these plugins. And then we encode it with the free software implementations of um, libtheora and libvorbis, mux them together, and then use the shout to send element to send them to the IceCast server. And, yes? I was just wondering, um, why didn't you go for Fluendo streaming server? Right, so another option is uh, Fluendo makes a streaming server that's supposed to do all of this together. And the answer is, I'm just not familiar with it. So it's called Flumotion. 
So it's another complete system. And the Debian conference, the DebConf organizers have written a piece of software called DB Switch, which is also used for streaming conferences. And so it's designed, you have, for each camera, you have a box that takes the DV feed off the camera and sends it over Ethernet to a central server, which does, lets you do video switching. So you have sort of a software video mixer. And then it can ar create archives that you can post on the website. And it can also do live streams through Icecast. So that's another piece of software to look at. Uh, just. And so what's great about this is you can just put a bunch of media elements in an HTML web page with AUG URLs. And if you're using Firefox or Opera or Google Chrome or Safari and you have the AUG plugins installed for QuickTime, you'll get <coughs> whichever streams we've managed to keep up. So as I said, we're kind of scrambling to keep these, get this stuff working. Um, and we don't have all the resources we need. So some things are up and some things are down. But uh, anyway, that's my talk about IceCast.